Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Tony again, and I hope that you guys are all having a beautiful day so far. And in today's video, we're talking about 20 idioms relating to animals. And these are gonna help you sound more natural in English. So if you're interested in English idioms, then please continue watching. So the first phrase is gonna be as free as a bird. When you say that someone is as free as a bird, you mean that they have no responsibilities and they can do exactly as they like. For example, today you have a lot of homework to do and when you finish your homework, you are as free as a bird. It means that you're free to do whatever you like, playing games, going shopping, hanging out with your friends, etc. So as free as a bird. Next one, butterflies in the stomach. When you say that someone has butterflies in their stomach, you mean that they are very nervous. For example, when the boy you like looks at you and you feel nervous, then you can say, Oh my god, whenever he looks at me, all I feel in my stomach is butterflies. Sometimes you can just simply say, you have butterflies to mean that you are really nervous. I always have terrible butterflies before exams. So the next one is like a bear with a sore head. Okay, when someone is like a bear with a sore head, he or she is extremely bad tempered. For example, this morning you just noticed that your friend was in a very bad mood. He treated everyone badly and complained a lot. Then you can say, Hey, what was wrong with you, dude? You were like a bear with a sore head this morning. So like a bear with a sore head. Next one. The bird has flown. When you go somewhere to find or catch someone and you just discover that this person has already gone away or escaped, then you can use this expression to refer to this situation. For example, We went straight to the house as soon as we received the call. But the bird has flown. Fight like cat and dog. When you say that two people fight like cat and dog, you mean that they always argue or fight with each other. For example, my brother and his wife just fight like cat and dog every day. So fight like cat and dog. Look like something the cat brought in. If someone looks like something the cat brought in, he or she must be very dirty or untidy. For example, when you visit your friend's house and his face is like dirty and his clothes are like sloppy, and then you can say, Hey, what happened to you? You look like something the cat brought in. So remember this, look like something the cat brought in. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Please don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that you lay a cat down and try to skin it with a knife. That's too savage. If you say that there's more than one way to skin the cat, you mean that there are a lot of different ways to achieve an aim. You can use this expression when you want to give advice to someone. For example, Hey, don't worry. It doesn't matter if your plans didn't work out. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. Next one, like a dog with two tails. Of English origin, it alludes to the belief that a dog wags his tail as a sign of pleasure or happiness. So when you say that someone is like a dog with two tails, you mean that they are very, very happy and pleased. For example, you gave your friend a present that he was really in favor of. He was so delighted and happy. So he was like a dog with two tails. Next one. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. When you say that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you mean that it's difficult to teach someone new skills or to change somebody's habits or character. And it was like impossible to get people to try new things or new ways of doing something. And it is usually not polite to say it about the person you're talking to. You can say it about yourself or about a third person. For example, I tried showing my grandpa how to use the newest gaming console, but it seems you can't teach an old dog new tricks because he didn't seem interested to learn. He preferred the ease of mobile gaming instead. Like water off a duck's back. When you say that something is like water off a duck's back for someone, you mean that that person is not affected or upset by any criticisms or warnings at all. For example, I've told him that he's heading for trouble, but he doesn't listen. It's like water off a duck's back. Next one, as slippery as an eel. When someone is as slippery as an eel, then it's really difficult to catch them or 
to get a direct answer to a question. It's not because they're so slippery that you can't touch them. It may be because they are too crafty or cunning that it cannot be caught, although it's known that they're acting illegally. For example, the minister can be as slippery as an eel when he doesn't want to answer a reporter's question. Next one, the elephant in the room. So this expression refers to an uncomfortable topic. It's something that people don't want to mention, and they especially don't want to be the first one to mention it. For example, when your family is having dinner, and for some reason, your mother just happens to have a really angry look on her face and she doesn't want to tell others what happened and everyone else is too afraid to ask so there'll be an elephant in the room for the duration of dinner next one an elephant never forgets this idiom is commonly used when referring to someone with an excellent memory for example you bought your friend a brand new pair of shoes that fit perfectly and he was like hey how do you remember my shoe size then you can say, well, an elephant never forgets. Wait a minute, aren't you a cat? <laughs> a fly in the ointment. A fly in the ointment is an expression you can use to refer to a small event or circumstance or factor that spoils a pleasant situation. I have a full business plan and I'm sure my idea is gonna work, but there's only one fly in the ointment. I don't have any money. Next one, as cunning as a fox. When you say that someone is as cunning as a fox, you mean that they are very clever and very good at tricking and deceiving people. It is usually taken in a very negative manner. And sometimes you can refer to a person as a fox to mean that they are very clever and cunning. My rival is as cunning as a fox. Next one, I could eat a horse. When you say that you could eat a horse, you mean that you are very, very hungry. I haven't eaten since breakfast. I could eat a horse. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. When you say that you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, you mean that you can give someone the opportunity to do something, but that doesn't mean that they'll be willing to do it. For example, as a teacher, I always take my students to water, but I can't always make them drink. It means that I teach them lessons, I give them knowledge, but they have to be willing to learn. They have to do the homework by themselves. I cannot do the homework for them. So you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. That's it. The world is your oyster. If you say that the world is your oyster, you mean that you are able to take advantage of all the opportunities available. For example, I've graduated from university. I'm setting out on my journey and the world is my oyster. So the next phrase is, don't count your chickens before they hatch. It means that you should not make plans that depend on something that has not yet happened. A race is coming up and the prize for winning is $1,000. Then you will be entering and you're feeling confident that you will win the whole thing. In fact, you're so confident that you already bought a brand new TV and you plan to use the prize money to pay for it. Thus, it could be said that you are counting your chickens before they've hatched. Why? Because you're only assuming that you will win the prize money from the race and you've made plans. However, this is unwise because that outcome is not guaranteed. In the end, you may lose the race and you may have to return the TV. The last phrase is cry wolf. The meaning of the phrase cry wolf is to lie. This phrase refers to someone who lies or complains about something even though no real problems are present. Or to someone who always keeps asking for help when they don't really need it. With the result that people think that they do not need help when they really need it. For example, if you cry wolf too often, people will stop believing you. And that's the last idiom for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you can learn something from this. Please leave some comments down below to let me know if you like this video or not. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and remember to hit the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever I have a new upload. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.